We can't deny the importance of honeybees when assisted pollination add value reaches billions of dollars every year in the United States alone. We depend on honeybees to get the nutrition we need. I don't know about you, but I like to eat well and stay healthy, which makes the art of keeping bees an important subject with a lot of competition. Beekeepers are in constant search for the perfect honeybee. The perfect honeybee is the one with the right traits, with the best features to make a beekeeper happy. High honey production? Oh yeah! Gentle behavior? That would be nice as well. High tolerance to varroa mite infestation? Oh man, that's the one. Basically, beekeepers are looking for a mix of high productivity and immortality, which is kind of hard to get. And in this video, I want to start a discussion about honeybee selection programs giving emphasis to selection of varroa mite resistant honeybees. We will talk about all documented traits found in different apes mellifera populations, either selectively bred or naturally selected for resistance and tolerance to varroa mite parasitism. I have no idea how many videos it will take to cover all of that, but one thing for sure, if at the end of this video series you're not a subscriber, I don't know what I'm gonna think about you, man. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Umberto Bon Cristiani, and this is Inside the Hive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. Here we talk about honeybee research and the importance of honeybees. If you like bees, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you can be notified about future videos in this video series. The ectoparasitic mite Varroa destructor is the most significant pathological threat to the western honeybee, Apes mellifera, and still today the leading cause of death in honeybee colonies. Since Varroa destructor has only shared a short coevolutionary history with Apes mellifera, the European honeybee, very little is known about the relationship between this novel host and the parasite. The jump of species from Varroa mite natural host, the Asian honeybee, Ape serrana, to the European honeybee, Ape mellifera, occurred about a hundred years ago and in evolutionary time this is nothing. This is important to know because at this moment we have an unbalanced host-parasite relationship. There has been not enough time for evolution by natural selection to select a balanced combination of apes mellifera and varroa destructor strains that can live together harmonically. Also, we well-intentioned human beings are constantly interfering with this process and perhaps delaying the balance to happen. Honeybees have the world record for genome recombination rate among all multicellular organisms and on top of that, the honeybee queen mates with dozens of drones, the male bee. In combination, this creates an incredible genetic diversity inside the honeybee colony. This genetic diversity is the secret sauce of honeybees to adapt and survive in many different conditions, making them one of the most successful societies in natural history. So it is clear that honeybees have the tools to survive this new threat alone and they will not end up extinct. The problem is that to survive the new threat, naturally, a new kind of bee will need to emerge from the selection process, and very likely these new traits of this resistant bee might not go along with whatever the beekeepers need and desire. Some beekeepers believe this is the way to go. Leave the bees alone, don't treat with anything, and let the new honeybee rise. Some beekeepers don't like the idea at all because the new honeybee might not be a good fit for where they live or the business model they follow, putting the beekeeper's survival ship at risk. Where do you stand on that? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. So beekeepers start to look for heritable honeybee traits for resistance or tolerance to mite throughout breeding programs or selecting for natural surviving untreated colonies. This video is brought to you by our fans on Patreon. If you want to get exclusive content, nice merch and help me to keep these videos coming for free to everybody, please visit patreon.com slash inside the hive tv and consider supporting me over there. Thank you. It took a while for researchers to start to search for these traits. Varroa mite was found in Apes mellifera in 1949 for the first time in the old Soviet Union, then in Europe in 1967 in Bulgaria, then in 71 in South America and in Paraguay, then in Africa in 1975 in Tunisia. The studies looking for traits started after that, in the 80s, and increased over time as you can see in this graph. Red shows when Varroa mite was first found in France in 1982, in USA in 86, in UK in 92, New Zealand in 2000, and now, unfortunately, Australia in 2022. By the way, I will have a special guest directly from Australia to talk about the discovery of a raw destructor in Australia for the first time. 
coming soon to the channel, please sign up to my email list to get more information about future live streams. Here you can see when studies start to happen. On naturally surviving honeybee apes mellifera populations in purple, and breeding programs populations in pink. From the natural survival side, researchers start to look on Africa bees first, Apes mellifera capensis and scutellata, then they move to Africanized bees in South America. From the breeding program side, efforts start with observations from Yugoslavian bees showing varroa mite resistance signs and even being imported to the United States in 1993 to be sold across the country by queen breeders. So as you can see, we have today several programs selecting honeybees to resist varroa mite parasitism in many parts of the world. In any genetic selection process, you need a starting point. You need to know where to look at it. You need to know what you want to select. Otherwise, you can't select something that you cannot observe and quantify. In the beginning, to learn where they should be looking at regarding varroa resistant traits, investigations start on Ape Serana, the regional host, to figure it out the mechanism underlying a known, well-balanced host parasite relationship we have in nature. Ape Serana was the place to go to learn how to fight varroa mite from nature itself. Basically, three varroa control traits were observed in Ape Serana. Grooming, reduction of varroa mite fertility, and varroa sensitive hygienic behavior, VSH. And these become the base for many breeding programs we have today. But the discovery of these traits and the implication for future breeding programs around the world is the subject for the next video. Until then, please watch this video right here to learn more about bees, subscribe to the channel if you didn't already, and if possible, support me on Patreon. It is great to have you here. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.